The purpose of this video is to show you how to chamfer this complex situation of having six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six lines coming together all at one point. That's particularly challenging. And uh, I'm going to show you now uh, ways that that can be done. So the fundamental problem associated with this is not necessarily that this line is collinear with this line, but it's that they intersect at the same point. And we have that going on with three sets of lines in this particular model. And so what we need to do is we need to try to disrupt that intersection. And one way to do that would be to start by chamfering just the entire top cube, such as this. Now I can see this line is still collinear with this line, but they don't intersect. And the same is true with this one and this one. And then this one uh, no longer even has another line. That line that was going straight up doesn't, doesn't exist here anymore. And so this is um, the first way we can try to solve this, is by making sure that those lines don't intersect. Uh, doing this, then, I can go ahead and attempt to chamfer the bottom cubes. And it would look like this. One thing I would want to do, then, is try to chamfer this edge at the same time as this edge and this edge. That's what I'm doing right here with chamfer, chamfer number five. And here I get that beautiful looking intersection that I want. But for this particular shape, this does not come with other, without other problems. And the other problem that it comes with is that I do not have these edges over here looking the way that I want them to look. That's not the type of chamfer I want in those corners. So I need to ask myself, what else can I do in this situation? Now I've gone in, I've attempted to reorder things and think about how it could be done, but I cannot achieve a triangle on this corner and the proper shape of the chamfer that I want in this corner at the same time. I just can't do that. I can't seem to find the right combination of things to make that happen. So I have a different approach that I've used to achieve the same kind of thing. And what I'm going to do to show you that, so I'm going to take these chamfers and I'm going to suppress them. And I'm going to show you that what I attempted to do was create, allow the collinearities to exist between these lines, but not have an intersection. And the way I did that is I simply put a cut right at that intersection that was the same size as my chamfer. And by doing that, I could uh, now go in and pick all of the corners that I wanted to have be chamfered and chamfer them. And now I've got a little bit of a problem here that we'll talk about in a minute. But I'm essentially having this hexagon, which is what I want in this area. Plus, I'm having the good um, corners that I want in this area, and likewise on the opposite side. And all of my corners are looking like triangles on these outside corners, which is what which is what I want. So I feel like I'm getting closer in this sense. And now what has to happen is we get to say to ourselves, within this space right in here, there is um, a void that is exactly the size of the chamfer that we want. And that's because we made the cut that was one by one by one. And so. Um, this is a time when you're learning the CAD system. You might want to get curious about this. You might want to kind of search on Google or YouTube or something like that on how you might fill between two shapes. The other thing you can do is you can kind of look around at some of the options that we have. And hovering on any of these options, it'll tell you uh, what is possible. For example, this boundary boss base adds material between profiles in two directions to create a solid feature. Um, the one we want to try here is this lofted boss base, which is an advanced uh, technique, but it's a way to solve this um, problem of trying to get this thing chamfered correctly. This says it's going to add material between two or more profiles to create a solid feature. And that's what we want. We want to add material from this triangle to this triangle. So. Let's give that a shot. 
I just added that loft and now we have um, exactly the shape that we want. Now because a loft is a new kind of feature for you, I'm going to just show you how that was done. So let's go ahead and delete that one. Okay, so we go into the loft feature. It's going to ask us to select the profiles that we want. There's one profile. Okay, and the next profile is this one. Not the edge. I take that back. Let's delete that one. We want to uh, have that face. All right, and it is filled in that material, and I accept that, and we're done. I will show you though that when using lofts, there is um, something you have to pay attention to, and that is these green these green dots. These green dots are deciding how it's going to transition from the one profile up to the other profile. In this case, it did it in a nice, beautiful, straight line. But if we move these, it will, it will try to fill from one profile to the other and sometimes twists around itself as it's done right here. So you want to pay attention to those green dots and get them uh, to be moving around until you get the shape that you want. So that's that. That's how you get that shape. And I hope I described a little bit of theory there that made it obvious to you why I used that approach. Now, there may be other better ways to do this. And if you find those, love to, love to hear about them. Thanks.